Welcome to Sew with Monty. Today we're going to work on a convertible collar sample. I really like this technique and it's a little different than the stand collar because it's made to wear open or closed. Where the stand collar really is made to wear closed with a necktie or buttoned uh, band. So we're going to do a little different uh, thing here. We're going to do the convertible collar and I'm going to show you how to sew it. This pattern piece is the one I used, placed on fold, to cut my two collars. I've cut two of these because we need an under collar and a top collar. The under collar has interfacing adhered to it, so that's on the pattern as well. So I cut one interfacing and adhered it to only one side of the collar. These two pieces are my front facings. This is what's going to encompass my neckline when I do my, my collar and put it on. This notch, note this notch right here, this is where the end of the collar comes to. The rest of the section of this facing is called the lapel. So I'm going to show you different little techniques on how to sew this so that it just looks beautiful when you're done. The last two pieces, slide this over here, are the body pieces. Now this is a sample, so the rest of the body is not included. But what I've done is I've already cut out and sewn the shoulder seams. This is the back placed on the fold. I cut one of these. And then I've cut two fronts. Again, noting where the lapel is, I've cut a right and a left front. And then I've joined the shoulder seams together with a half inch seam allowance. This is just a little sample to show you how to sew a collar like this and make it look really beautiful. So let's move over to the sewing machine and we'll get started sewing. So now I have my collar pinned together, my top collar and my under collar. The under collar being the side that's got the interfacing and I've got right sides together. So I'm going to sew just across the top. I'm not going to go down the corner. I'm going to sew just across the top with a three stitch length, half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to back up when I get started. So we're just going to go straight down through here back up a little bit and then we're going to go all the way through to the other side. Now I sew, I'm sewing with the pelon or interfacing side up because it gives more stability. If I sew with this side up top, this side has nothing on it and it's more flexible so the foot could stretch it. But if I keep the stable side up, it will have more control over the side that doesn't have the interfacing on it. So I'm going to go all the way down through here just keeping my half inch seam allowance and when I get to the other side I'll back up again and then we're going to grade the seam. Now we've talked about grading in other videos but it's what makes the collar edge lay beautifully and not have a lump in it. So we're going to back up right here and then I'm going to pull my thread out. I'm intentionally using black thread so you can see the seams and I'm going to grade it. I'm going to take the interfacing side and I'm going to trim it half of the distance of the seam allowance all the way through. And then after I do this, I'm going to take it to the iron and I'm going to press the facing. Let me get this trimmed a little bit and I'll show you. So after I've got this trimmed, I'm going to open it up and press it very flat like this. And then I'm going to press the seam, everything over, to the interfacing side like this. So I'm going to trim it and press it like this and then we'll come back and do the next step. So now I've pressed the seam allowance, the graded seam allowance. See, this is the side with the interfacing. I've pressed them both toward the interfacing or under collar side of my collar. Now I'm going to just come over here and I'm going to edge stitch right along the seam on the underside of the collar. So I'm going to put my foot so that I'm just lined up about a sixteenth of an inch away, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch away from that seam. And how I've gauged that on this machine, if I have my needle in the left hand position, that line, that seam lines up with the inside time of my foot on the left side. Using a three length, and I'm just going to get up on my fabric a little bit before I get started so I don't, it doesn't have a temptation to chew, and I'm just going to go forward a few stitches and back a few, just locking it. And then just simply sew all the way through here, lining up my seam. Now on this project, I'm going to intentionally not top stitch it because I want to show you how beautiful the edge stitching can go on the fabric if you don't, if you, if you, if you 
no cut stitch. It doesn't have to be there. And, and how nice it lays without having that. So I'm just going to back up a little bit. It went a little bit too far. And just lock that stitch and come back off. Now, you can see how nice and flat that is and how when I fold it, it wants to stay right under there because of that edge stitch. So it pulls the under collar down and keeps it right under the edge of that seam. Now it's intentionally going to make the under collar a little bit longer than the top collar. That's okay because some patterns will actually have a smaller under collar pa pattern piece that's trimmed for this very reason so that it is a little bit smaller. But that's okay. It's going to be fine. You've got plenty of seam allowance here to negotiate that little extra you've got at that point. Now the next step is we're going to take the collar, we're going to fold right sides together, and we're going to fold it right along that edge stitch. See how I'm folding it right there? And I'm going to pin the sides of my collar and I'm going to sew through here. So let's do this one right here. I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance again, three stitch length. I'm going to back up when I get started here, so I'm going to go forward a few stitches and back up. And then I'm going to come to my first pin and go all the way down to the other edge and I'm going to lock stitch down here. So back up and come off. Now, this little edge, I'm going to do both of them the same way. First thing I'm going to do is cut the collar at an angle within an eighth of an inch of the seam. See? Like that. So when this gets turned in, it won't interfere with the point of this collar. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the interfacing side only and I'm going to cut it at half its size, grading the seam again. Just like such. And then when I turn it, and you can use a, a, a turner if you want to do this, or I like my big, my big yellow pen. I use this a lot to turn corners. And you can gently just pull it out until you get a nice crisp corner. So we'll do both sides like this and then we'll press the collar and then I'll come back and show you how to attach the collar to the neckline. Doesn't that look nice? So we'll go and attach the collar to the neckline in the next video. So I've pressed the collar and it came out really nice. As you can see again, the edge stitch has so much control over the, the way the collar looks. I mean, it just wants to lay flat. And I've also pinned it to the neckline of my little sample. Now, let me talk to you about this. As you can see, I have this area right here exposed. I've clipped it with a half inch clip. No more. Don't want to go too deep. Make sure you're exactly a half inch on both sides. And I've peeled this area back out of the way. So when we sew the collar, we're going to sew it all the way through and not catch this edge, but catch all of this as we go down through here. Now on the other side, the neckline side, I've put a stay stitch in here. And I highly suggest you do this. It's a little extra step and it's easy to say, ah, I don't need it. But if you'll put it about an eighth of, a way, eighth of an um, inch away from your actual seam line, the longest stitch length you've got, don't back up, leave your strings hanging, it will control your neckline. Because sometimes, more times than not actually, the neckline will stretch out of shape. There's a lot of bias areas in here and they'll give, which means it's hard to get the collar, which is stabilized with the interfacing, to fit the flexible neckline. So the stay stitch kind of helps that problem out. Now, at the seams, you want to pin them twice. I haven't quite done that, but you want to pin on each side of your seam allowance so that it lays flat because you don't want it to curl up and make a bulk there. So make sure at your seam allowance to pin both sides and the inside one where the neckline is, you want to pin it so that these are down, out of the way. So our next step will be, we're going to start here, we're going to back stitch and we're going to sew all the way through to the other side and back stitch. I'm going to use a um, three stitch length and I'm going to go right half inch in and start off with a lock stitch, go back, and then I'm going to come all the way through my collar, just making sure I keep everything flat. Check the underside of your collar so that your or your neckline so that you don't sew a little tuck in. 
it's not hard to get out if you do, but you just want to kind of keep that flat in there. And you just sew all the way through here. And when I get right here where I put that fabric deeper than, than the other side, I want to make sure that I sew right to that corner. So I'm going to come right through there, kind of slow, and make sure I sew right to that corner. And then keeping my neckline nice and flat under here, I'm going to sew all the way around. Just keep checking it. And then when I get to the other side where the other corner is, where it's been clipped deep, I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to go all the way through here, always, always looking at the underside, making sure it's as flat as the top side. You know that the old saying, haste makes waste, and it sure does, because if you're in a hurry and you sew a bunch of tucks in, then you're going to sit here and spend time ripping them out. So you might as well do it slow and right the first time and try not to get tucks. And I'm going to go right in here again, checking my neckline to make sure it's laying flat. And lining up right with the corner there. And almost there. We're going to come all the way off the edge here. Back, and, back up stitch at the very end of my collar, making sure that my collar edge is lined up with the notch for the lapel. That's very important. So I'm going to go right there. I'm going to go to the edge, needle in, back up, and back through. So we're going to pull it out now. And we're ready for the next step. So we'll go on to the next step now. I've pinned the facing of my sample to my neckline. So you can see it's pinned together here. And I'm going to sew from this edge down to this pin. Now this pin is particularly placed right where we did the deep clip, uh, clip excuse me, <laughs> deep clip. Um, so we're going to back up there and stop and leave this open. And we're going to do that on both sides. So let's go ahead and do that and then I'll do the next step. So again, three stitch length, half inch seam allowance. Make sure to back up when you get started. And we're going to go right through the edge of the collar here. And making sure, always check under there to make sure your neckline is laying flat, just like you did on the back neck. You don't want to tuck. I think I see a tuck. Let's see if I can work that out. Sometimes if it's a very small tuck, you can actually work it out with your, your thumbnail or your fingernail. I think that one might just be the case. But you want to stop, when you come around through here, you want to stop right where this last pin is. Because that represents where the clip is in the back of the neck. So we're going to stop right there, lining up with our seam if at all possible. And go in and come back out and lock stitch it. Now, We'll do both sides this way. But the next step is we're going to turn this and we're going to edge stitch to the body side, actually, of this neckline. So to do that, instead of trimming the interfacing side, we're going to go in here and right here we're going to trim making sure we don't have any tucks. We've got a little tiny tuck right there. Now, this is good. We have, do have a little tuck, but I want to show you how easy it is to get it out. If you get a tuck, just take your seam ripper, pop your tuck right out of there. See? So it's kind of good sometimes when these things happen. It's not, not the end of the world. Just pop it out of there. Get your little thread out of there. And then just sew over the, the tuck area. Now when I sew over the tuck area, I'm going to sew on this side of my fabric so I can be aware where the tuck was and I don't re-sew a tuck back in there. So I'm just going to get all my thread out of there that I don't need and then I'm going to sew back over it using this side as my top side. So we'll go back in there and we'll patch the hole just like that, making sure that we, whoops, needle in the wrong place. There we go. And we just get that tuck area out of there, just like such. I'm going to go all the way over here and realign it. Now, let's go back to this neckline area. What we want to do is, first of all, get all these strings out of here. 
But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim so that we're going to do the edge stitch this time on, let's see here, on the body side because this is going to lay back like this. So we want this to be edge stitched over here on the body side, not the interfacing side. So this time I'm going to go back to where I clipped right here and I'm going to trim the body side off of my fabric. So I'm just going in here and I'm just going to take this fabric. I'm going to go just about where the seam is and I'm going to take half of it out of here. So I'm just going to trim it out of here and get it smaller. And then I'm going to go all the way to the end like that. And then right here where the collar and the neckline are curved, I'm going to give it a little clipping. I'm going to clip about every inch or so. Don't go all the way to the seam or you'll make facets on your curve. Just clip a little bit and I'm going to make a little bit deeper right there at the actual collar. So you grade the seam and then you clip. See now it's relaxed. See how it relaxes? The next step is we're going to go press it. We're going to press the seam this time to the body side. And then we're going to edge stitch right along here. So that'll be the next part and let me go press it and we'll come back and do that. So I wanted to show you on the ironing board what the collar is looking like at this point. It's a little easier to see over here than it is at the sewing machine. So as we review here, this is the first part we did. We sewed the back collar, leaving the top collar out of the sewing process. And then we made our deep, cleat, uh, deep clips <laughs> over here on each side. Now I've come back and I've clipped through all the layers. All the layers have been clipped through now at the deep clip position. The second part of this was we sewed the facing on to the front side, stopping again at the deep clip. So we have a little extra here hanging out, but we've stopped sewing right here. So all of this has been sewn. Now I've graded the shirt side instead of the interfacing side of this seam because the next step is we're going to edge stitch this seam allowance to this side of the body and we're going to go to the shoulder and stitch this down. We're going to do both sides that way. Once we have that edge stitch, this folds over, as you can see. See, and it looks very much like this when we're going to be finished. So this collar will go back this way, and this will go over here, and here's your lapel. See? So that's our end, end goal. So let's go back over to the sewing machine. We're going to edge stitch to the body side, the seam allowance to the body side, and then we'll finish it off. Now, note one other thing before we leave the iron. All of this neckline has been clipped except for the lapel area. So all of it's been clipped to relax the seam, the seam allowance, so that it fits better when we start sewing this together. So let's go back to the sewing machine. We'll edge stitch this, we'll finish the back of the collar, and we'll finish it off. Now we're going to just edge stitch on the body side of our sample right along here, just beyond the collar tip, about three quarters of an inch. We're going to do that on both sides, making sure it's nice and flat. And I want to be about oh, three quarters of an inch away from the edge, the tip of my collar. The reason you're going to edge stitch into the collar, past the collar tip, it actually holds the collar tip down and keeps control over it as well. So we're just going to go, um, whoops, hang on a minute. We are going to go three, okay, we're good. So now we're just going to go down a little bit, lock stitch, and then slowly edge stitch, keeping it about an eighth to a sixteenth away from my actual seam line. Get to the other end, and we're just going to back up a little bit. And we're going to do this on both sides. Now once we have this done, it really looks beautiful, by the way. So we're going to trim all of our strings. And then, just like the collar, we're going to turn the edge of our lapel over like this so that it folds right along the edge of our edge stitch. And we're going to stitch here, half inch. So we're going to set it up and just stitch right down through here, a half inch. I'm going to back up go forward 
Now this isn't a whole garment, but if it were, we would carry it all the way through to the hemline or to the edge of our uh, center front, wherever that ended. So now we have this. So we're going to go in here. We're just going to clip this back so that it makes a nice clean corner. And again, just like the collar, we're going to take the interfacing side and trim it in half, grading the seam. Now when we turn this, it makes the most beautiful lapel because the same thing happens on this lapel edge and happens on our collar edge. It's going to stay down. It's not going to look weird or twisted. It'll always stay down just like that. And we'll do both sides of that. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sew the center back neck up. Now we have our collar and our lapel. No top stitching. All we've got is our edge stitching along the back side of our lapel edge and our collar edge. And that's what's controlling this and making it look so beautiful. Now we're ready to sew up this back neck. I attempted to do it prior without a stay stitch and I found that my fabric wanted to stretch here. So I repinned it and I put a stay stitch right along the edge just before the fold back right here on the collar side. And then I just pulled it just enough so that it fit right along the edge of my neckline. Now it's in control and I don't have to worry about it stretching as I sew it. I've also pinned the facing edges, the flaps on the facing out of the way. So I'm going to stitch this neckline right to here from here. Edge stitch it all the way through. So let's do that and then we'll show you what to do with the facing and your sample will be done. So right here we're going to start off I'm going to just go back a little bit and forward just a little bit. Whoop. Let's go forward. There we go. So now we're just going to go forward and take the pins out as you come to them. And with the stay stitch in here, it's going to be a lot better, a lot easier to control. So two things you need to embrace when you're sewing is using stay stitch and edge stitch when you need to. Because they're going to make the difference in whether your garment looks like did you make that or where did you get that, I always say. So if you're getting someone asking you, did you make that, instead of where did you get that, then maybe you need to go back and reevaluate how you sew. Because <laughs> you don't want it to look homemade. It's okay if it is homemade, but you want it to look like a really top-end expensive garment. So with the edge stitch in here, it's holding this collar in place so much nicer instead of stretching it and making tucks. Had I not done that, I would have had a twisted collar with little tucks in it and it just would have looked very unprofessional. So um, I'm glad that I, I revisited it and put the edge stitch in, or the stay stitch. So now we're at the end, we're just going to go real slow and gentle, come back, back up so it doesn't come loose. And that is the back edge of our collar adjacent to the neckline. So as you can see, it looks very clean inside. Now we just have to address the facing part, which I'm going to trim this little corner back, just this part, like that, so that it doesn't poke out. And then I'm going to come over here, this one seems to be better, and I'm going to fold it nice and flat like this. Now mind you, if you were doing this for a real garment, this edge would be finished as is, as would be your shoulder seams. You wouldn't have raw edges. But right here, along this edge, you just turn this under and align it with your seam allowance. And we're going to pin it down. And this gets whip stitched down with a hand needle. Just whip stitch that right in there. And that finishes it. So let me do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you on the form how nice our little collar sample is going to look. So this is our convertible collar and lapel completed. And you can see by the edge stitch, see how nice it lays? It's not curling up, it's laying nice and flat, the tips aren't rolling out, and that's because of the edge stitch we've put on the collar and on the back side of the lapel. It's nice and clean, and then on the inside, what I've done here, where the facing is, let's just roll it around here, I've pick stitched right here on the seam line. 
and fold it under the facing so it's, it's very clean here too. Keeping in mind that on a real garment, these seams would be finished off, either um, surged or a, a zigzagged or Hong Kong seam binding, something would be going on there. So anyway, that's the finished assignment for the sample convertible collar. Last thing is, you could turn your collar, see this is what makes it convertible, because you could fold it over like this, the lapel is kind of extended because of the style, but if you wanted to, see you could have buttons there, and this could be your collar as well. So that, that's what makes this a convertible collar. It can be worn like this, or it can be worn open like this. That's it.